Thank you, Chair, for, those, for that warm welcome. Members of the head table, ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon I will be briefly focusing on one aspect of the life of Dr. Kapileu, his political legacy. But I also want to mention his professional and academic life. He held lectureships both at the University College of London and Westfield College. In addition, the University of Khartoum in Africa was honored when he served there as an assistant professor. Kapildeo's academic legacy has kept him in the fraternity of Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein. Kapildeo was an expert in the study of gravitational forces, and his theory of rotation and gravity, known as Kapildeo's theory, was compulsory textbook study for examination at several universities. Furthermore, scientists at the United States Space Agency, NASA, they have utilized his theory in their space exploration programs. Students and advanced researchers have also used his publication, Vector Algebra Mechanics. Several of his articles have been published in internationally recognized scientific journals. But who was this Dr. Kapileu, who was briefly appointed principal of the Trinidad Polytechnic in 1959? As principal, he was powerless as the PNM, the People's National Movement Government, neglected his demands to increase staffing at the Polytechnic Institute. They neglected his recommendations to change the curriculum and also to have alternative sites. A frustrated couple there decided to leave this job and enter the political domain in 1959. As head of the Democratic Labour Party, the DLP, Kapile would soon realize the fractures within the Indian community and also within the hierarchy of the DLP. He also understood now the very fragile nature of the Indian electorate. Eric Williams, as Premier of Trinidad Tobago, held the advantageous position of influencing state policy. Williams laid the foundations for party politics in the colony in the post-World War II era, and he created a well-oiled political machine, the PNM. It was this and other political forces in which Kapile had to battle against. And I wonder if the people will not protect us, I shall call upon my supporters to arm themselves and protect themselves in such circumstances. End of quote. This was a brave and fearless Kapileu. This was a Kapileu who was not willing to retreat. This was a Kapileu who stood his ground. But this was also a Kapileu who made sure that his statements would not be misinterpreted in the media. And he said, I quote, you must not believe that because I have to speak loudly sometimes, I am inciting people. On the contrary, we are a peaceful party. We want to hold our meetings in peace in this territory, end of quote. In 1961, also on the campaign trail, Kapildeo demonstrated his knowledge of international relations and understanding of imperialism when he suggested that Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom should provide financial aid to the Federation and that these three countries should help in providing markets for West Indian goods. The results of the 1961 elections were inevitable. The PNM secured 20 seats in Parliament, including the six newly created constituencies, while the Kapileus DLP formed the opposition with a mere 10 seats. Allegations of electoral irregularities prompted a DLP boycott at the opening of Parliament, followed by more boycotts and walkouts. Furthermore, due to the inequity in government's allocation of senators, the DLP refused to nominate its two senators. It was a perfect time for Eric Williams to make his next decisive move. 
His political position in Parliament emboldened him to virtually demand independence from Britain. An embarrassed colonial office ceded to his demands. And during May to June 1962, Dr. Kapil Dev, opposition delegation leader, and his team from the DLP were in attendance at the historic Trinidad and Tobago Independence Conference at Marlborough House in London, in England. Kapil Dev appeared frail with a sling on his left arm due to a recent car accident. But it was on this stage that Kapil Dev would again display fortitude and unveil the hypocrisy of the PNM. In May 1962, at the opening of this conference at Marlborough House, Kapileu said with regret, and I quote, I think that a wider measure of agreement would have been achieved if an attempt was made to secure our cooperation from the outset. The government, however, chose to ignore us and proceeded to prepare a draft on its own so that when the Joint Select Committee was belatedly appointed, the government members of the committee had already closed their mind." End of quote. This was a serious indictment against the government of Trinidad and Tobago. The intense and heated exchanges in England between these two delegations did not cease. On the 1st of June, at a session at the conference, the DLP submitted a memorandum that the qualifications of voters be clearly defined. But the PNM government disagreed, and they did not want the return of the ballot boxes. Two days later, at another session, the opposition and government were split on major issues, including provisions for constitutional amendments, appointments to public service commissions, and delimitation of constituencies. Furthermore, Dr. Kapildew would not budge on his demands for proportional representation for DLP members in the police service. He wanted new elections before independence was granted. The government was unable to make any sort of request for these demands. And Dr. Kapildew and the DLP did not believe that these were unreasonable demands on the government. At a conference, Kapildew reiterated his party's position, and I quote, our objective is to, is to have a constitution which would preserve democracy in our country after independence. We want a judiciary that is independent. We want provisions that would guarantee effectively the rights and freedoms which ought to exist in a democratic society. We want Parliament democratically constituted. We want a procedure for the amendment of the Constitution which protects us from any arbitrary exercise of the power to amend." End of quote. <coughs> Interestingly, the British officials at the Colonial Office chose to ignore the demands of the opposition and favored Eric Williams and the PNM delegation. On the 7th of June, at the end of the conference, a local newspaper reported, and I quote, government gets everything, the opposition nothing, end of quote. And that Dr. Kapile was completely dissatisfied with the British proposals. In an effort to avoid a stalemate and possible racial conflict, the defiant and steadfast Dr. Dr. Kapile and the DLP reluctantly accepted a constitution which they knew was flawed and re would result in abuse of power by government officials. Kapile was a personality blessed with an amazing vision who easily understood the rotation of the galaxy, but he was never fully able to understand the deep hatred between the two major races in the colony. He was never fully able to understand the ulterior motives of the PNM. It is no surprise that even after the Capileo era, many persons blessed with talent and intellect have refused to enter our party politics. Ivor Oxel, in Black Intellectuals Come to Power, 
praise Dr. Capelli when he was only 40 years of age. Ivor Oxel described Capelli as Trinidad's most educated man. It might be debatable as to whether Capelli's short political stint makes him deserving of the title Father of the Nation. However, when one considers his struggle, his health issues, and his scientific achievement, it certainly is more convincing. I thank you. <laughs>